from what happened last season. Last We're entering a year, this is going to be the first season since 2011, that neither Florida State or Clemson is the defending champion at this rate. What is the mood like right now in Clemson coming in the first time that Clemson is not the defending ACC champions in, in six seasons? You know, I think, I think Clemson fans last year – we're not prepared for the way the season played out. Um, they've gotten so accustomed to getting elite level quarterback play over the years with, with Deshaun Watson, Trevor Lawrence, and, and just are not used to watching a quarterback struggle the way DJ Uyunglele did a season ago. And it, it's a different kind of feeling around the fan base. You know, you, you got some that are worried that Dabo Sweeney's going to stick with a struggling quarterback and not give the stud five-star freshman a shot. Then you got the other side of the fan base who thinks the five-star freshman is going to come in and beat, beat the veteran out before the season even starts. I mean, it, it, it's kind of weird, but, uh, but from what I can tell, the defense it, it, it still gives much of the fan base a lot of confidence that Clemson can get back and compete for the Atlantic Division again this season because that that defense, it, it should be one of the best in the country. That defensive line is it, it, talented, it's deep. Um, it, it might, again, it might be one of the best in the country, could be the best in the country when it's all said and done. Just got to stay healthy, you know, and that, that goes for every team, but especially for Clemson coming off the – injury riddled season they had a season ago mm -hmm. yeah Florida State I think both Clemson and FSU have a really good defensive line unit that is probably going to carry Florida State's defense this upcoming season I think that's going to be the strongest side of the ball for the Seminoles this, this upcoming season and one thing that Florida State was able to do a good amount because they had to run the ball Clemson had to run the ball a lot last year is with Jermaine Johnson and Keir Thomas coming off the edge but both of them are gone and now you bring in guys like Jared first. You've got Derek McLennan, who's been on the roster for years and years now and finally getting a chance to potentially now be a starter. What about the quarterback room for Clemson? Well, what should FSU fans be keeping an eye on? Because I'm not entirely sure, and this gets your take on it too, but does Dabo feel pretty confident there? What he's got with going with DJ again? Or what, what's the potential option of what they want to do there at quarterback? You know, coming out of the spring, Dabo, Dabo Sweeney made it clear that, that DJ is still the starting quarterback. He's going to be the starting quarterback heading into fall camp, that he had done nothing to, loss, to, to lose the job. And, and I feel confident that that's gonna, he's going to be the starter when the season starts. But I, I also think Clemson's got another option this season that they did not have last year. With all of DJ's struggles, um, I don't think Clemson really had – another viable option behind him to give an opportunity to take that job. You know, Tyson Pumachon was the backup. He was coming off a torn Achilles that he suffered in the spring game. I'm not sure exactly how healthy he was. If he was fully healthy, let's say that. Let's, I'm not sure if he was fully healthy when the season started. But even if he was, I'm not sure he's the better option of the two. I think Clemson has a guy this season – that if DJ continues to struggle, that Dabo Sweeney will not hesitate to give a shot. Um, Kay Klubnick has the making, all the makings of a fantastic Power Five quarterback. Um, he's mobile. He's got the arm strength. He can throw on the move. He, he's accurate. You know, a lot of the things that DJ struggled with last year. So while I think DJ is going to get the benefit of the doubt to start the season, I don't think the leash is going to be all that strong. And if he struggles, I definitely think we see Clubman to get an opportunity. And if he ever gets his opportunity, he might not ever let go of it. To me, the only question with him is durability. You know, he's a freshman. He came into the spring at 185. I think he's pushing two, he'll be pushing 200 by, by fall if he's not already. I saw him about a month ago. He looks like he's already there, you can tell. He's been in the weight room a lot. But to me, that's the only question is durability when it comes to club. Nick. But, again, if he gets opportunity, he might not ever let go of that job. Last season, we talked about this a little bit. Last season was the first time 
that Clemson didn't win the ACC since 2014, first time they didn't make the playoffs since that 2014, since that inaugural playoff year. So two-part question for you. Number one, how much pressure is on DJ right now at this point to get to get Clemson back into that playoff argument to get them back and winning the ACT. That's the first part of the question. And the second part, we all know about DJ. We all know what he's capable of. When he when he's on, he's on. We all know about that defense. Who are some of the the unsung guys or some of the guys maybe that that not just sports State fans but other fans should be on the lookout for on that Clemson roster for the twenty twenty two season? Well the, the, for your first question, you know, I, I think that's an excellent question. You know how how much, I think there's a lot of pressure on DJ, and I think a big part of how well he performs this season is how he handles that pressure. Um, nobody expected what we saw last year. You know, I, I know he was banged up. He had multiple injuries. I'm not sure he was ever healthy after the opener against Georgia. I was on the sideline that night. I, I, he took a beating in that game, you know, unlike I've seen many quarterbacks take lately. He, he, he took a beating, the worst of his career. I'm not sure he ever recovered from it. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how the season starts because I do I do think there is a lot of pressure on him. Make no mistake, I think there is a ton of pressure on him. And one of the biggest questions is how does he respond to that pressure? Um, and I think the jury's still out on that. We, we won't know until the season starts. As far as some guys on the roster that – I would say to keep an eye on some unknown guys. Uh, let me think for a minute. One guy that first comes to mind is Will Taylor. He's, he's a sophomore. He, he started out in the quarterback room last year, tore his ACL early in the season. The plan was always to play him at quarterback last year, then move him over to wide receiver. This is a two-way guy. He plays football, baseball. Future probably is in baseball, if I'm being honest. Um, Probably could have been a first-round pick coming out of high school, but he really wanted to go to Clemson. The people who have watched him work that work out at wide receiver say they remind him of Hunter Renfro with more speed, and to me, that's high praise. Clemson struggled not having a guy in the slot last year. I think they got some options there this year, and, and Will Taylor is a guy that I would definitely say is a name to maybe know um, on that defense. I, I'm going with Jeremiah Trotter Jr. He, he's a, another sophomore, got his feet wet as a freshman last year. He's a linebacker. Clemson's losing 11 years of experience at, at, at linebacker, you know, at, at strong side linebacker and at the mic. I mean, excuse me, at weak side mic or middle. Clemson calls it mic, but the middle linebacker and James Skowski and, and Balen Spector, they had 11 years of experience. And that's a lot to replace. I don't know if Trotter is going to be the starter coming out of fall camp. Wouldn't surprise me if he was. But, you know, Dabo Sweeney, you know, he, he, he likes to give his more senior guys the benefit of the doubt. And we might see McGuire start out there to start the season. But I think it's going to be hard to keep Trotter on the field. I think he's that good. He's the son of Jeremiah Trotter, former Philadelphia Eagle. His football IQ is off the chart. Um, like I said, as much experience as Clemson's losing at linebacker, I think they're going to be faster and more athletic with guys like Trotter and, and Barrett Carter, who is another sophomore. He's going to be playing that Sam spot, you know, kind of the, the strong side spot in Clemson's defense. I talked about Clemson's front four earlier, defensive line, but it's really the front seven. I think Clemson has just got a loaded front seven. And, and I think that linebacker core could be scary as, as fast as, as much speed is in that room right now. But those are two guys that jump right off the top of my head. I have a quick question, nice and simple. Is that Shipley kid still going to be playing uh, this upcoming season? FSU fans, uh, not a big fan of what uh, – what we had to endure during that game where Florida State just could not stop Will Shipley running down Florida State's defense all throughout the game. I don't think if Will, if Shipley wasn't on the team, I think Florida State comes away and wins it. But, goodness gracious, is he, do we need to watch out for Shipley? If he wants to take October 15th off, that'd be great. 
He yeah. It was only a freshman, off. just a baby, <laughs> Logan. Oh, great. Nightmare. Yeah. Bye. See you, Mark. Yeah. I'm getting off. <laughs> yep. True freshman last year. So he's got two more years left at least. And, and, mm. and I think we are just scratching the surface, you know, as far as his potential. He really started coming to, into his own over the final three, four games last season. After that Florida State game, actually, which was kind of his coming out party, if I'm not, if I'm remembering right, but um, yeah, I, I'm 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 real high on Will Shipley. He, he's got the speed; he can run between the tackles. I think he's got to be a little bit better catching the ball out of the backfield. But I, I think Clemson's going to have a three-headed monster at running back. They, they've also got Kobe Pace, a redshirt sophomore, kind of a, a kid that kind of came out of nowhere, came in in the same recruiting class as Demarcus Bowman. You know, and Bowman being the five-star guy got all the attention, but it's but it's Pace who has done all the producing. And last year, along with Will Shipley, Clemson had another freshman by the name of Phil Maffa, who, who I think might be the most well-rounded back on the on the roster. Um, he can do it all, as far as you know. I was trying to think how to say this. I guess let's just say well-rounded. You know. All around back, I think Moffa's got maybe a little bit more potential than all, both of the other guys, and that's saying something because we all seen what Will Shipley can do. You know, the, the, the plan was actually to redshirt Moffa last year, but with Lynn J. Dixon transferring out and some injuries, they had to take that red shirt off of him. He got his feet wet, and but he spent all season, all spring, taking all the first string reps because Pace and Shipley were held out, still recuperating from injuries they suffered last season. Neither one of those guys were 100% at all hardly last season. Like everybody else on the Clemson roster, they, they, they you know, had to push through and, and play with injuries. So I know everybody plays with injuries, but it just seemed like it hit Clemson a little harder than it does most teams last year. I, I've honestly never seen anything like it. Final question for me, looking at your schedule for this upcoming season. Obviously, it's very it's very nice for Clemson in the first half of the season. Probably the toughest games are at Wake and NC State at home, which at the surface, I know that you lost to NC State last year, but still, it's a easier first six games. Next, The second half of the season, you go to Florida State, you go to Notre Dame, and you got Miami at home before finishing uh, off the year with South Carolina at home. On the surface, as a Clemson fan, as a Clemson, somebody who covered the Tigers, how important is it for Clemson this way to start off that season undefeated, knowing what that second half of the season has been? I think it's extremely important. Um, I think it's extremely important. I, I think that North Carolina State game has been circled on the calendar for a while. Um, you know, last year was the first time Dave Dorn had ever beat Clemson. They've got to come to Death Valley this year. You got to go way back to find the last time North Carolina State won at Clemson. Um, I want to say it's like 2002 or something like that. I can't remember for sure off the top of my head. But it's been a long time since, since North Carolina State's won at Clemson. And I think that game is definitely circled onto the calendar the way, you know. And I get why Dave Dorn was celebrating and all that, but, you know, it probably wasn't taken very kindly to inside the Clemson locker room. But um, I think it's extremely important because the back half of that schedule, you noted, you got Miami. Um, I think Florida State's on the back half, not the front half, if I'm not mistaken. And, and that trip to Notre Dame. So, so yeah, I, I'm with you. I think it's extremely important, especially if you want to set the tone early in the season and establish yourself. Say, hey, last year was a bump in the road, you know, we're getting back to where we were. This is still our ACC. I think you need to set that state. I mean, think you need to make that statement. You need to make it early in the season. I don't think dropping an early game does that. It's going to be so much fun playing you guys also in the Big Ten. I mean, we played each other for 30 years in the ACC. We're going to go to the Big Ten together. It's going to be so amazing. Yes, I'm already planning this. We're going to, you know, we're going to be in Columbus, Ohio together. We're going to be in, you know, State College, Pennsylvania. Logan's going to replace Bloomington, Indiana. It's going to be amazing. Hey, I've already been thinking about some of those bucket list trips, too. Don't worry. You're not alone there. I play a hey, maybe I'll show up, too. Whoa. Oh, you're coming whoa. up this way. Whoa. Sure. Whoa, whoa. I'm hopefully getting to go to South Bend for the first time this season, so we'll see how that – hopefully that works out. Hopefully. 
That was I, I fun. See, I, I see this as the son of a New Yorker. I'm going to pass on the trip to Rutgers, though. I think that's one we can pass up on. I, I think I might pass on that one with you. Okay. Hey, somebody's going to have to make it. Somebody's going to have to go, huh? They still play football at Rutgers? Clemson at Rutgers, sure. There you go. The home of college football. The birth of college football there at Rutgers. Absolutely. Piscataway, it's beautiful. <laughs> A November 20th trip to Piscataway, New Jersey. Nice Ooh, cold was... rain, like 36 Ooh. degrees. Doesn't that sound good? Oh, sounds Hard delicious. pass. Okay. All right. All right. I thought I could sell you. I, I'm, I'm more inclined to enjoy that Florida weather, even though I live in South Carolina. <laughs> mm-hmm. We both have some good weathers. We both have some good weathers. Yeah, I hate the cold. 